All right, well, good evening, everyone joining us online and in person, and welcome to our presentation on uh, turtles and Native American culture with our presenter, Deb Kutowski. Uh Before we get started, just a few quick uh, programming notes. First of all, we are trying a new streaming system here, so those of you joining us online, hopefully we have no glitches. It looks like it's going good so far, but if there are some issues with sound uh, or video, just let us know, and we'll try our best to fix that right away. Um, I also want to mention we do have some other upcoming turtle programs uh, on July 8th at 6.30. We have a turtle rehab uh, specialist who's licensed by the state of Michigan named Scott Yonkers, who's coming in with some of his rehab turtles to talk about that process and also other turtle species here in Michigan. And then on August 13th, we have John Ball Zoo coming to the museum and bringing some of their turtles. So they'll be doing two different programs on that day, one at 5.30 and one at 6.30. And space is limited for that, so we'll have RSVPs coming up here in the next few weeks or so for that program. So reserve your spot for that while you get a chance. That should be really fun. And we'll also have some different uh, staff activities going on, some turtle art and some turtle science as well while you're waiting for those programs. Uh, now to introduce our presenter tonight. So Deb Kutowski here has been working with the museum for over 25 years, mm -hmm. uh, teaching children here at the museum. She's also been teaching about Native American culture for we say earlier, 40 plus years 40, or so? 40, yep. 40 years. So she's been in the business quite a long time, very knowledgeable, and we're very excited to bring her uh, in here to the museum today. Uh, Deb is both part of the Potawatomi and Ottawa tribe yes. and is a member of the Turtle Clan. Yes. So this fits her right in with her. So Deb, go ahead. I'll turn it over to you. Okay. Thank you, Thank you for that introduction. Yes, I am Turtle Clan grandmother today. There are seven clans in Michigan. We are called the Woodland Indians, but we're also called Three Fires. Three Fires of Michigan. Everybody knows that Michigan Indians are Three Fires and that we're Woodland Indians. So uh, a lot of our things that we use as our sacred uh, storytellers, in a sense, are come from our clanships, which are wolf, uh, buffalo, loon, uh, sturgeon, uh, Turtle, I always forget one, <laughs> one or two, but each one of those clans had a responsibility to teach to their people a certain thing in a way. Like my teachings would come from my grandmothers would be to teach about the plants, the animals, and the water. And what our responsibility was to these specific things, mine being a turtle. Now a turtle, <laughs> Most people just say, oh, that's a turtle. Yes, but this on the back of the turtle tells stories of our people and our women. What we use is our, uh, a lot of times is our women are sacred. So some of the clans have these sacred teachings about their animals and about their women. Here's a uh, turtle shell and it has, uh, what is it, 13? 13 individual compartments inside here. Okay, now, those are for the 13 moons, which is a year. So this is a calendar for our people, a way to tell time before we got all the other different things. Okay, now, here's where the woman comes in. The woman's sacred. There are 28 times. 28 times is the cycle of a woman. So this on the back of this turtle tells the cycle of a woman and how sacred she is to the to the 13 moons, because women have moon lodge, okay? And being Ottawa and Potawatomi, both of them have those lodges. Okay, so this turtle tells that story. And then when we were little, our uh, grandparents told us a story about turtles and how the turtle interconnected and spoke to the creator. And he said to the turtle who was in the water, of course, and the creator went down and asked the turtle, would you come up? from the depths of the water to come up to the uh, top. And he talked him into it. Today, you are on the back of a turtle shell. This is called Turtle Island, all of it. Okay, so then we think about this this way when we teach our children is, uh, we teach our children about our relatives all over the world because we're interconnected to red, white, yellow, and black. We're interconnected to those colors in the colors of man. And it takes all of us to work the earth today to make sure that we leave something 
of goodness for our children and our children's children. So a lot of these parts of these turtles, you know, I, I just would make bags and different things, sacred bags for ceremonies. Well, then I would get even <laughs> really cute. And I started to put, I had so many turtle bellies, I needed to do something with them. So I made them into picture frames. This is my oldest grandbaby. Of course, he'd be mad if he knew I, I brought him. <laughs> now, we, um, besides a turtle, we have like even the eagle. The eagle was the one that, that spoke to the creator on our behalf. It's like we the people, all of us, were having a hard time in this area. And it took somebody to, of the family, which is two-legged, four-legged, winged in water to help us because they were a part of us too because we're all interconnected. So the, the uh, people would pray and talk to the uh, ego because they knew the ego could go the farthest. But it was a blackbird, a hawk, and an eagle. And all of, oh, I want to do this. I'll do it. I'll do it. The little bitty bird had great, great heart. And he tried. They told him what to say. And when he flew, when he flew, he didn't fly very far because he was too little. And the hawk said, surely I'm bigger. I can do this. I can do this. So they let him do it. Told him what to do. Do and let him go. And he could not make it as far. So the ego said, surely I can make it. I can make it. So they told him what to say to the creator when he got there. So he flew off and he was gone. He was the one that could go the highest in the sky. And even today, an eagle that's flying right now when it's raining, he just goes above the clouds where it's not raining. <laughs> he knows to be um, to take care of himself. And even an eagle has two life systems. When they're born, they're you know they get all their their parts, their beaks and stuff. And after a while, that starts their claws start getting all decrepit because they need to use the uh, trees and and stones to help them do their uh, claws and their beak. Well, it's a point when they get to a certain age that they go and fly high up and go hide. And it's a time when they renew. Actually, it's a time when they die and they're reborn. Is how we say it because <clears throat> they knock off all their claws, no claws. They knock off their beak, no beak. And the creator grows it back so they have their second setup of life. And they, I think it's seven, I want to say 70 years that they live. And they're one of our teachings and teachers that teach us the way of the creator in our prayers. And we use him in our ceremonies. It's with museums that, and Native Americans that can actually put in for eagle feathers. That's the highest honor in our community is to get one eagle feather. And we have five sacred ceremonies. We have many than many more than that, but we have five. When we're, our babies are born, we bless them. Then the next thing happens is they get their spirit name. My grandfather said that our language was so sacred that the devil doesn't know it. So their baby was gifted a name. So And the language is sacred. He, he can't get them. <laughs> it's kind of a helper. Okay, the next is uh, coming of age. It's a time when our children are educated and then they're, we, we see if they listen to what we said. Would be a time where maybe a mom and dad would take their child to the woods, the boys, and let them go out there and make a fire, make find food, survive for a night. In the olden days, it probably was four nights, but now it's one. <laughs> So we, are, we put our kids out there, but you know what? You can't just leave them there. So there's always mom and dad somewhere watching them. They don't know it, just to keep them safe because there's other animals out there. <laughs> so then that is coming of age. And each one of these are eagle feathers. The next one is you fall in love and you marry. 
two families blending together is big business. <laughs> and the last one, we call it walking on, is death. Each one of those ceremonies are um, done in our community uh, for our families so that we can light the fire of our people in the culture. I mean, we've been doing this all along, but <laughs> it's uh, better to be more open with this and be able to teach it more to our children. So a lot of these things that, uh, you know, we use as our, our trainers is even something like a musical instrument. Here we go. John, you know about these. I got these from you. Deer toes. <laughs> Takes a long time to cook them out, don't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's not a one you want to. And we put these deer claws on our regalia. This is for men, not necessarily for women. <laughs> and there's a sound. We always say, you hear us before you see us. So we use on our regalia, we have different things. Mine tells the story of all the people I've met in my life or, or some, my great aunt, my tribe, my medicine pouch, dream catchers, baby's pictures. This is my story. When I And I'm a teacher, so when I teach my children, I want them, and my other children, I want them to understand how you tell your story. It's you. You get to do whatever you want to do. Just tell your story about what do you like? What was your favorite story or song or something? And you could put that on your regalia telling the story, even some of the creative ways of beadwork. <laughs> they know these ones. Or even this one. I'm doing this for my grandbaby. Hello, kitty. But I teach that to them as a way of patience. It teaches them to use their hands and it teaches them a way of patience because beadwork takes a long time to do it. But when it's done, it's so beautiful. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Here's a turtle that uh, my friend John Weaver gifted to me, he found in the woods. I've had this for a long, long time and wore it for my powwow dancing or even my friend. You know, a lot of our instruments are made from the animals. So you're gonna eat of the meat of the animals, you're gonna use all the parts. So you'll find a way to do this. Turtle shall rattle. We sing songs to our babies, just like we can sing songs. Well, hello there, ladies. Even the stories of our weaponry. Years and years ago, before we got into trade with the Europeans, our knives looked like this. This is bone. <laughs> and you would learn how to make your knife from the bone. Well, then eventually when we got into trading, it changed the different ways of changing. Even here's a nickel in the butt of my knife. <laughs> but we take yesterday and today and tomorrow, and we use those as our teaching tools, even the sacredness of our medicines. This is sweet grass. When you go hunt this with your grandma, you're gonna go by the water and you're gonna go look for the certain kind of grass. And before you even touch it, you put tobacco down, take some tobacco and you put it down and you pray to the creator that he lets you use this medicine in a good way and that you're not going to deplete it. You're just taking some. So when you use this, this is one of our sacred medicines, the sweet grass. We take it and we braid it right there before we cut it. And then once we get done with braiding it, then we cut it. Here's your grandma's braid of hair. So that's why we use this in sacred things. Like you could put this in dream catchers and some of the girls wear them or just wear a bundle like this. And this is actually a medicine you can make a tea from. And it'll, it's holistic medicine. So not only do you pray with this, you can use it in your everyday life of making teas and different things. And here's another one. This is from Colorado, because my friend brought it back for me. <laughs> it's not Michigan. This is sage. 
This is another one of our plants. They say now with the COVID coming, they were talking about the medicines. This medicine, when burnt in your in your home, kills germs in the air. And a lot of our things come from the air when someone, you know, sneezes or something. So it's in the air. This kills it. All it is is the smoke of the sage. Not only is that, but we use it for prayers. And then we take this medicine and you can use it for a tea. You can drink this. But in your teachings, see, that would have been our teachings from our grandmothers to teach us the way. And to use everything that we could. Here's my backpack. <laughs> You'll see there's 13 times on there and 28 on the outskirts. No matter how big or how small. No, I didn't kill it. <laughs> Kids always ask me, did you know I got it for a gift? But all these things that I'm telling you are a way of teaching kids and, and being that I've been here to the museum for such a long time, I've touched a lot of kids by the stories that are told because every once in a while I get a mom comes back to me and tells me that when she was in that grade, she remembered me. Oh. Okay, then I've had people that you got grandma, mom, and you go into generations. I've got generations that I've taught. So it's an, it's an honor to be able to tell these stories, not only to my kids, but kids. It keeps it going on, see, and that's what we want. Everything that we're doing today as people is we're trying not to take anything in excess. We just use what we use and that's it. And some medicines you can only cut in certain times. You're going to take it big that <laughs> then like certain medicines you can only cut like in there's a medicine that a flower that's cutting right now and you can't get it again for the rest of the year. So you, you have to get the harvest in and it's used. These medicines that are cutting now are used in different medicines together, but you'll understand and you'll learn that way. Uh, to be able to say, oh, I can do that. I'll do this and do this. And here you go. Here's your tea. <laughs> so, and that was taught to me by, by my grandparents. So all these things are of, you know, like new age. Some of the kids say, well, it's new age. How old is that? Oh, about mm, 10 years. How do you know? <laughs> they always want to know the age of things. And is it real? Can they touch it? hands on. I like that idea. That's why I like teaching. Teaching the kids because they remember them stories and they remember where they got it from. And then they always ask me, do you live at the museum? No. It, I was always downstairs in the wild habitat and there's a house there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's a house there and most of the kids come in thinking I lived at that house. <laughs> And there's a raccoon stealing uh, garbage out of a can. <laughs> it's just so funny that. And that was one of the things that we wanted to do. When we started the program, we wanted to get rid of myths, what people thought. Not that they knew, but that, that they thought. So then when you have someone that teaches about certain things, that it just gets into your child and you, you share. See, so any one of these things right here is a uh, new wave. <laughs> How much time do I have? Okay, I'm just trying to get in so I can answer questions. Okay. So being that I am a turtle shell grandmother, I go to ceremonies with other grandmothers and we talk about our individual, what, we're doing in our areas and stuff and that keeps our what I always call our uh, smoke signals going so we know what's going on and all over here and everybody always asks about a powwow I don't know how many people have been to a powwow but a powwow is a celebration it's just a fun way to have fun and dance and be with your family and see the new babies and see who grew up and it, it's like a family reunion every time Especially because you, 
After a while, you know everybody. <laughs> you got to keep up with your community. So that's what I try to do. Now I'm a road man. What that means is <laughs> I'm more on the road than I have a base. I used to have the ba I used to have a base in my last job. But now I'm on the road, so I still do what I did before or have done for years in ceremonies and teachings and, and educating here and different places. Yeah, now I'm the elder. Yeah, and I, I, it was like it hit me like a brick. <gasps> She's right. It's us. And I've been telling kids for years, Tag, you're it. So it's up to us to do that. And once you get into that and your and your people, you know, you know who needs this or needs that, or just like now I'm trying to plan a, a powwow for Reese Puffer in August. See what the criteria is of mask and, and different things that I might have to incur, but I'm thinking about having one outside and I'm praying whatever day it is, it don't rain. Rain the next day after we dance and have a good time because we'll be outside. Uh, I'd like you to, we usually have it in the uh, gymnasium and we usually have it in the cafeteria, our feast, because every ceremony has a feast. So we have a meal together. <laughs> so that'll be in August. And then we have a uh, our Indian education um, when our children go graduate from high school. These 21ers now are graduation, graduating from high school. They're gifted an eagle feather, a t-shirt in recognition for their, their work. And just like we, we were talking about Shelby coming, uh, one being one of my girls and living her dream. And now she's doing doctor work and pretty soon she'll be here in Muskegon, Michigan doctoring. See, and that's one of our, one of our students that excelled. We have many, we have many, many students that have gone off to be great warriors. That's what I call them. You're my great warrior. Wherever you go, you're my great warrior. <laughs> so being that <coughs> grandmother and finding out all about our, our the deer clan or finding out what everybody else is doing, making sure that we're all... Um, you know, we're all trying to do growing trees, picking up trash, uh, any way that we can help uh, with the environment in the simplest forms, even planting a plant. You're doing many things. You plant trees. Oh, my goodness. It's not for you today, but it'll be for your children's children later, and that big old tree will give them shade or air. See, so that... That's how we uh, talk about our generations. And it's good to see a, a young one in the crowd. <laughs> yes, yes, and teachings. So is there, I guess, is there any questions? Can you explain the pipe? I can explain the pipe. The pipe is gifted to uh, people that are trained about the pipe, carrying it, and it's the pipe is about prayers. It's about a male and female energy that comes together and makes the prayers be stronger. And then when you do a pipe ceremony at any one of these ceremonies, it is a very, it's like a very powerful sacred gift when you light that pipe. I'd rather light it for a wedding than a funeral but I've done many of those. And it's a way of the person that carries a pipe has to take care of it. And then we have to, we have to give it away. See, cause it's never ours. It's only gifted to us for a time. And then when it's our time, it goes out and it goes to someone else. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing today by teaching people about the responsibility of carrying that pipe is big. It's like being a, a reverend, a pastor, a priest, it's like that. And you have to hold your people and take care of them with the spiritual sense of that male and female energy. And when you do a pipe ceremony, it's 
put you in another state, another world. I mean, it's, it's so uh, powerful. Crazy. And it's, yes, in that sense, it is. I know because my father passed away two years ago and my family asked me to do the ceremony and I didn't know if I could. I didn't know how I was going to do it. But it was like a sense once I got started, I just did it. It wasn't like automatic. It was like just you got in the zone and you you said what was from your heart because you're speaking without paper. So you're saying words from your heart. So I, I did it. I did that one, which was a hard one. But <clears throat> when we're asked to do that, matter of fact, I think I'm probably on eight or nine funerals this year, maybe more, but like I said, I, I do, I like weddings, <laughs> like gatherings like that better because it's a, it's a haha -ha kind of, and one of the things that I always tell someone is your greatest attribute is your laughter. Man, you got days, you just want to cry. Somebody will come and do something goofy and you'll laugh. And it'll be from your heart, your laughter. So I know about uh, those things. <laughs> How would you do your piping? So you have your animals, or you have the pipe, it's not necessarily the one that owns it. How old do you believe it might be? My oldest pipe came from Potawatomi, my Potawatomi sisters. And that was owned, it had its own owner before me. He passed on. It was a man. Mm -hmm. And then the, and the, I was gifted the pipe with a dream from my sisters. And that I don't know how old that pipe is because it's been generationed out. It's been, I bet you it's had three people that held it. And if you're lucky, you can hold it for 30, 40 years. Then you have to bundle it out and give it up. So like I have my son and my daughter, and then I have other people that I'm trying to train so that see how they walk and see if they're if they can handle it because it's it's a lot of responsibility to take on that for your community but it has so much rewards because you become to be the family all of you is big family so it's all you know it's good Oh my goodness, my, my friend tells the story and I always get it messed up. <laughs> and maybe you know the story about the turtle that's running, running, and um, he has somebody that's the turtle, the, the turtle cheats actually. Oh. Somebody else is in the ground with him and somebody pops up. Yep. Put the turtles in the ice. Yep. Oh, I don't know that one. I don't yep. have to find it. That sounds good. You want to tell that? Sure. Back at the beginning of time when turtle, animals could speak, the turtle was. Oh, I didn't say that. Um, oh, the hare was boasting about how it was a hare? Yep, yeah. it was a hare. Hair the bear? A hare. Hare. The hare was boasting about how fast he could run, and nobody can outrun the hare. Okay. He is so fast. And the turtle, you know, the, all the other animals were kind of sick of this. And the turtle was like, let's change this. Talk together one day, kids change this. So the next day, they go out, you know, down by the lake, it's the middle of winter. The turtles, they're with a bunch of his friends, and his rabbit comes up and says, you know, how fast I can run. Nobody can beat me. Turtle pops up, I can. What? No, you can't. I can. Okay, prove it. And, you know, let's race. Now the bear can be the judge. Okay, problem though, I'm swimming. Mm. I, I can't run on one of you. I'm fastest in the water. Mm. I'm still the fastest there is, so it's not a problem. You can swim in the lake while I'll run on the land. The lake's frozen. Mm. We'll get Mr. Moose to pop holes in the lake so we can see where you are to make sure that you're checking in, that, that you're actually swimming. Okay. So, just goes around on the shoreline, pop the holes all quickly throughout. Is ready to jump in. Rabbit's ready to start running around the outside of the lake. Bears like a mark. Get set. Go! 
and the rabbit starts off at a leisurely pace. The turtle jumps in as fast as he can, swimming away. The rabbit is just like, oh, this is so silly. Gets to the first hole, out comes the turtle. Oh, I thought you should put it on the pace a little bit. So he's going a little bit faster, gets almost to the next hole, out comes the turtle. Oh, wow, okay. Starts really picking on me, I'll come to an actual jog now. Out comes the turtle. Flat out running. Gets the next hole. Turtle beats him by about two seconds. Dead sprint the rest of the way. Every time the turtle just keeps popping up, just a hair before him, just barely. Here's the finish line. The bear's there, running as fast as he can. The rabbit's like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And up comes the turtle. I lost. Yep. <laughs> and the rabbit walks off in silence, trying to figure this out. You know, how have we lost? After a couple minutes, you know, the turtle's looking around. Bear can see all clear. Rabbit's gone. All right. Good job, everybody. Oh, pops all the other turtles. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah, she does. Passing on the story. Yep. That's yep. very important. Oh. How <laughs> does she learn that from somebody? Yeah, probably. <laughs> no, from John. Oh, that's wonderful. That's so cool. Well, at first, for a second, I thought it was a piece of the hair, but no, I actually learned it from John. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And then we're going to repatriate it with parts we don't use. The crawlies in the earth will eat that. So everybody has a part of that. And everything that we use will be used in ceremonies or gifted to the gra graduates or anyone, you know, some of the things uh, are handed over to your family. <clears throat> and you get two wings and you can make wing your fans from them. And then you get a lot of feathers forget how many feathers there is, but there is a lot. And then you get the tail feathers. And I like the butt plumes and everybody always laughs about that. Cause they're soft. They're so soft. They're like this. The girls wear them in their hair. The ones that stand up and they're fluffy. So I, I kind of like them, but yep, yeah, I've had four of them. Were you taught that from your grandparents and everything? That's wonderful. How young were you when you remember your first eagle ceremony? You know, uh, when I was little, yeah. I didn't even know what it was. Yeah. I just, you know, we yeah. went big fire. Everybody was there. The people that was the medicine people that came for this ceremony were there and they just did it. And we were just little kids. So we grew up like that. And then eventually you, oh, he's coming. We're going to do this ceremony to bless the ego for this man who's going to gift it out in his community, mm -hmm. which is going to make us even more family mm -hmm. by our gifts of sacred well, even in, you know, in our community, we give uh, our pipes back and they come from Muskegon, Michigan. Because a lot of people don't still don't believe that we're still here. And most of them are little kids, you know, because you're reading the books and, and things and they just don't think we're still here. <laughs> Do you have a turtle ceremony? Then do you, I mean, is it like... Or yeah, well, if you're taking of, like, say I get... Uh, my friend gifted me with snapping turtles. Okay, the snapping turtles, I'm turtle clan. I can never eat turtle meat. Mm. That's the other thing is when you're clan ships, you don't eat their meat of it. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> we have this ceremony where we kind of blessed, blessed that so that everything actually gets a, gets a ceremony because once you take the meat, he's did his circle, the the turtle has did a circle and then you replenish you from the meat of this animal. And then you use the claws. I, I use the claws. I use I, maybe not the tail or the head, but I was um, put them in the ground and go back and get them. Yep. So I can educate. Mm -hmm. Yep. Go back and get the bones. Yep, so go back and get the bones. Even the eagle bones. When I put the when the put the eagle into the ground, I probably put him in there for a couple of years. And then I may go back and get the bones of him so I can show. And then other things are made from them. I mean, you, there's many things that you, you when you're taught about it or you seen online or <laughs> seen somebody else, and you get creative. But then you gift it all away, so everybody gets something. Eagle whistles are very, very, very bones. sacred. Yes, the bones. Wow. wow. That's cool. Yep, and they use them in ceremony to blow the whistle from the spirit world wow. to us in the physical world. Mm -hmm. So we still use the bones of the ego. Do you have an eagle bone whistle? Oh, I thought you did. But we use all the parts of everything, deer, we use the hides, we use the toes, we use the legs, we use the brain to tan the hides, every part of that. And of course, when you get deer meat, somebody's eating deer meat. <laughs> and a lot of people like deer meat. And it's growing again and, you know, people liking uh, their fancy cooking with oh, deer and bear and elk and... You know. <laughs> yeah, see? See? So yeah. It's uh it's one thing that I always say is that we take, but we never take too much. And we always have to give a gift before we start. And the start is usually we use the tobacco because the tobacco is our wisdom keeper. This is the wisdom keeper of the north. And we use the tobacco in a sacred way to pray so that it replenishes in its cycle so that we'll take and then we won't take anymore like maple syrup 
there's a certain time you tap the tree and then you get the maple syrup and you boil it down to make your syrup. And that's what you're getting as much as you did found or whatever. So that's another way. And even in Muskegon now, we have wild rice because they grew it back. Little River Band of Ottawa Indian, like, I don't know how many years ago they grew it. They put seeds in the water and it's growing. Nope, we have it right here. Oh, really? Yes, wow. we have it right here. And it's the tribes decided to work together to replenish the old ways to teach our babies how to go out and get that rice and then do the process of the rice so you can eat soup or whatever, however way you want to do it. So that's being done too. Right here in Muskegon. And then when um, my tribe is here, they're trying to get their tribal offices here in Muskegon, Michigan, or even our clinics and our doctors and nurses, and that will be here for our people here. So that, you know, we're growing, we're growing. We started off in 1990, I want to say 1994, 98. That's how young we are. Being a tradition, being a federally recognized tribe. And then the other thing was, is that this is a just a fact, is that we didn't get our freedom of religion um, uh, until 1978. So the what we're talking about here today, you couldn't talk about it then. You could, yeah, you could be jailed for your own religion. So we've come a long way. We've did a lot of things to get here. And it's it's like, well, I would say it's one big prayer, continuously, one step, like a baby's. Baby gets up and tries to make that step. That's what's happening now because we're so young. And our tribes are trying to give back in the areas where they come from, their lands. Like our uh, reservation is in Manistee, but because our population is in Muskegon, big population, then they created uh, like a, what was it called? A office. Uh, oh, I can't think of the name of it. <laughs> An office, a satellite office. That's what it's called. We started off with satellite offices and now we're going to the more permanent way. So we're growing. No, uh, Ottawa. Potawatomi tribe is doing pretty good themselves. They have a, a medicine lodge. They have all kinds of different things that they help with. With, And then the tribes work together. So the we're doing what the three fires people did hundreds of years ago. We're doing it today in another way with more technology, with more, I mean, more new wave. I mean, I remember my grandpa, He, uh, we had a phone at our house and the phone rang and my grandpa, went, oh, what is that? Well, Grandpa, that's the phone. What does it do? He didn't know nothing about that. So answer the phone. And I said, my Grandpa, I said, Grandpa, you want to talk to somebody? Because he, to, to know what, what, there was somebody on there. So he says, yeah. So I said, okay, say hello. It was my aunt. Say hello to, um, I think it was my aunt, um, Helen. And he, he said, hello. And she said, hello to him. And he says, Oh my God. He didn't know what to do because he didn't know what to say. He was just combobbled by the whole experience of it. But I said, Yep, Grandpa. Boy, now with my grandpa, he was born in 1900. <laughs> to learn all these ways and see his great great grandbabies with all these computers and iPads and <laughs> tablets, he would really be scared. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Pretty much, I bet you wouldn't be touching it. My my dad was 94 when he passed away and he got a computer when he was 90. And he was trying to uh, understand the computer because everybody was into it. So he wanted to understand that way too, coming into the new wave. And he, uh, he loved it. He just didn't understand how he could go farther. He would get to a certain extent, like I think he did the weather. <laughs> <laughs> and certain things he had on there that that was, but we taught him how to uh, what do you do. He used to be a catalogs, and then we taught him online how to order online. 
He loved it. He loved it. He... Just imagine him with Alexa. I know. <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah. Or I say, hey Google, <laughs> and Miles, turn on the light. <laughs> yep. So we've we've come a long way, and we still hold the traditional form of our people today, and that's what we're teaching. And that's what this is trying to mimic. Yep. It's that's that it. yes. And then every once in a while, I get somebody that comes and says, "I remember you." Are you the turtle lady? Mm -hmm. That's me. <laughs> well, ways, even modern people, I know it's how grounded it keeps you. Yep, pretty much it does. Yeah, you show, you show respect. And it's, it's a good way to be. Right, and then when people know that you have those attributes, then it's easier to work together. Or if you're like a peacemaker and you can... Somebody's having drama and you know how to jump in and try to solve the problems. Get some wisdom. Yep. Yep. That's what I do too. Cause I used to do peacemaking for my tribal government. <laughs> yeah. It, actually we started the program. We took a blank piece of paper and made a program that our tribe, uh, our tribe put it together and then we just, Chose so four people, and I was one of them chose. And then we learned about Michigan law and indigenous law. And wow, those are two different laws, mm -hmm. two different ways of. So we created a, what we call peacemaking court in our tribe. And we still have that today. Of course, now we got to catch up on all that couple of years that we've been down and try to pick up. And then now we have virtual powwows online or Zoom or what. <laughs> so see how we come? We just rode that boat and we're here. <laughs> or we stayed in the boat. No, we stayed in the boat. We're still here, right? We're, we'll roll. <laughs> One more question. Yes. Any questions? Oh, I thought it. He gets. You're gonna want to see it tomorrow. No. <laughs> right. Just call me on my phone or Facebook. Right. Yeah, I just want you to know that anything that's that uh, we've touched to for our nourishment, we use everything. Uh, that's the way that it was taught to us. That's what we have to teach. I'll take any turtle story. <laughs> I'll go home and I'll probably start it and then it'll roll. Yeah, exactly. But you know, we're literally just like turtle nuts. And so, you know, always healthy across the road. Yeah. Always trying to make barriers for any turtle. Oh, okay. You're a, you're a, you're a helper like me. Jump out the car and save them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Let me get your email. I'll give you turtle stories. <laughs> Turtle stories, bear stories, deer stories. Oh, yeah. That's why they got the fence. Yes, I love it. We moved out there the year that before they put up the fences. Yes. For a few, and so, yeah, we, we moved out to Glen Lake. And they were working on the highway there. I remember. When we were we were moving. And I was driving the kids back and forth from Orchard View out to Glen Lake every day. And I'm quite sure they can't get the and we'd be stopped in traffic and we'd be on the dead. It was awful. And it was horrible. It was absolutely awful. It was, it was so upsetting that it was smelly and it was, yep. you know, and you just felt so bad for them because they just wanted to go lay their eggs. Mm -hmm. You know, and we just built a road across where they had to go. And so having a fence was amazing. And yes. It was a really good thing. So save our population of our turtles. Are they planning on repeating? Right, and then spend that fence has been up for years, so they have to maintain it too in order to yeah, keep it. I would see, I saw a turtle the other day, and I was like, oh my gosh, how did this happen? And I started looking at the fence, and I was like, okay, it's time, it needs stuff right here. Yeah, they do that, they tweak them fences and uh, 
stuff like that to keep it. Oh, Ooh, yeah, that makes sense if you did the middle. But they're still out there. They're still out there. <laughs> See? Yep, so that's uh, that fence when it went uh, up, everybody kept saying, did you want, or something about, did I do the fence or did I tell somebody I needed a fence to save the turtles? Anyway, they blamed the turtles on me, the fence. I said, yep, I did. It was me. It was me. I did it. Just to save the turtles that crossed the road. Instead of being real and hitting them, that, that was a way to save them. So it costs a lot of money, but you know what? It's still there. Yes, yes. And the different turtles. You think of turtles as just one turtle? Oh, my goodness. There's so many turtles, different kinds. So it's going to be interesting, your programs that are coming up for me, because I want to come in and listen. Mm -hmm. I want to listen to about the turtles from the uh, specialists. I'm a novice, actually, because to me, they're all sacred and turtles. <laughs> it doesn't matter what they are. <laughs> uh, well, thank you very much, Deb. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And madam. <laughs>